All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the session. Um, what we did on the last session was work on a web component for a little timer. And um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out um, for the most part. Uh, the markdown looks pretty nice. It's uh, Astrocast Campdown um, using some information, and then it has the fallback of whatever the twig uh, time diff is showing. Uh, so I think it's pretty cool how it actually turned out. Uh, so that makes me pretty excited. Um, uh, let's see here. So what I'd like to do is potentially do something similar to that with the video player. Um, but before that, I just want to give an uh, idea of this one page I created. So I think I have countdown. There we go. So I'm actually going to be using this in OBS uh, for sort of a uh, loading page. So it's going to know when the next episode is supposed to start. Um, so uh, not this episode, but probably on um, one of the two follow-ups later uh, next week. Um, we'll be able to see this actually in action. So the idea being that I'll be able to start the stream maybe 15 minutes early and start telling people about it, and they'll be able to see a countdown timer showing when it's actually going to launch. So um, I might actually do a little episode just on how to get this into OBS, uh, but I haven't done any meta uh, screencast yet, so that could be interesting. Um, running this also ran into some other issues. Um, with how uh, the events were coming. So um, I've started to add uh, some more things to our list here, and this list is getting kind of big. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of half done, half finished. Uh, so I might have to start cleaning up older stuff. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of tw uh, Twitch integration for now, or at least this, the sub pieces of Twitch integration. And I might actually say Twitch integration with Pusher combine these two so we can get a better handle on these. Uh, the video model is mostly done, um, so I'm going to get rid of the sub things. Uh, easy admin, I'll leave easy ad. That's, that's actually not important at all, so I'm going to take that off ent entirely. All right, so uh, turbo links, um, I'll leave that there for now because I, I would like to do that. Uh, we did do the Astrocast uh, countdown component. Um, what I think we might do today uh, is extract that into its own file, and that'll sort of be the template for what we're going to do with the Astrocast video tag. Uh, so I'm going to have to uh, look at that a little bit and see how we're going to do that. Um, as, as for other stuff I would like to do uh, possibly today, um, I think the, the calendar stuff being just a raw array of um, essentially date-time objects, I think we need to do something more interesting with those. Um, if we look at the code, uh, not that code, if we look at, say, calendar controller, uh, what we have is we get, uh, we get the information from the cache, so we get the events. Um, if there's no events, then we want to do an unavailable HTTP exception in this case. Um, and then we need to sort. Uh, we need to filter out all of the events that have started in the past, um, and then get the first one. This is a lot of work, and it's being done in several places now. So it's well past time uh, to kind of ex ex get this into its own um, interface to keep track of those. So that's what this particular issue is about. Um, so clean up duplication, trimming first event if it is in the past. Um, and then another thing I wanted to do was uh, to do a chat page. Uh, right now, we do have a chat page listed at the top, uh, but this link actually goes straight to get, uh, the Discord link. I don't necessarily want it to go just to the Discord link. Um, I, what I'd really like to do is have it go to um, uh, one of the restream pages, uh, our restream chat thing, so that this page, like let's say we're going to click on it here, would actually um, say chat, would there be a link to join Discord, there'd be a link to all of the places where you can see the content and join in the chat, but then I'd also want to put the inline chat here, uh, if there's a session currently in progress. 
Actually, even if there's not. Um, that way, if you wanted to, you didn't have to actually go um, join the uh, join Twitch directly on their interface or uh, Google or whatever, um, and you'd still be able to see all of the chat messages coming in. That's kind of the general idea of, of what I'm thinking about with this chat. Um, so the first thing I think we should do, actually, let's maybe do this, because I think this is going to be pretty easy um, to get this going. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to warm up with the chat page here. So first thing we're going to do is create a controller for chat. Um, also, I started messing around with Powerline yesterday um, just because I wanted to see what it would look like here. Probably be tweaking that a little bit more, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to do bin console, make controller, and we'll call it chat. All right, so it's going to create the chat template for me. And as I've done in the past, I'm going to move this to templates chat. All right. And I'm going to have to update that in the code itself. So let's go chat. Uh, doesn't know about it yet. Chat controller. Um, here we go. All right. So this is just going to be slash chat, and the name's going to be chat. I'm going to go now back to uh, base and Discord. So I'm going to copy this URL just so that I have it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is change this now to um, the path chat. There we go. And I think that should be enough to at least get the page rendering correctly. So let's go ahead and go to chat. All right, so controller name does not exist. Is fine. This is just worrying about. Um, uh, it's worrying about the fact that the template is requesting the um, the default stuff that came from the Maker Bundle. So I'm just going to remove this and say chat. Uh, I don't need this junk or this junk. And let's see here. Discord server. I'm going to paste the URL. Go follow. All right, let's see here. All right, it's cool. So we got we got that there at least. Um, and so what that happens there is that it's actually going to launch Discord, which I already have open. Um, but at least now it gives some more context. Uh, what was happening before is people would click on chat and it would just take them straight to Discord. That might not necessarily be what they would expect or want. So this gives us a little, little bit of room to uh, kind of play. So I'm going to copy a little bit of the styles from live sessions here. Uh, let's see here, body. Yeah, copy that. chat with us. We don't need any of this stuff. There we go. Then we'll just use the original text that I'd written. All right. Live sessions, go to chat. All right, chat with us. Join us, join the chat on Discord server. Um, uh, let's see here. I think on the home page I have uh, Facebook. Yeah, I want these as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, or visit. Mm -hmm. 
All right, yeah, this section here will work. chat or Alright, so we have some white stuff in here. Current text white. Let's just remove that. Uh, so we do want it to say something, but I think we'll I think we'll leave it like this for now. Um, if the styles aren't 100% correct, I'm not going to make a big deal about that. Or um, join chat on. make it look more like a sentence here. Uh, let's see, so this is in line. Why is this breaking? I wouldn't think that it... Let's see. I think I need to do spaceless in here because Period shows up where it's supposed to now. No underline. MX. Ah, okay, well. Um, I'm going to remove these MXs here because I don't think those make sense anymore in this case. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is check out uh, Restream. Uh, I'm going to log in here. Next, they have a chat thing that I'm going to use. So let's do. All right. Uh, launch chat app. start streaming to connect your chat. Yeah, unfortunately the Facebook chat stuff just doesn't seem to work very well. And I'm not sure about connected or search internet connection. Yeah, There's something weird um, with the way that the Facebook stuff is integrated. It seems like it works sometimes, but not others. All right, so um, here we have the embedded uh, chat box. Um, there's a couple of different themes. Um, I don't think I'm, maybe I could do the compact one here. Um, message alignment bottom. Add messages after 30 seconds. I'm just gonna launch or copy this. And I think I need to do this as a iframe. See what this does out of the box here. There we go. Uh, ideally, I don't want that to show up. Connected. I wonder if I can hide that compact alignment. Hide messages. True. Timeout. is actually safe to use. All right. Let's see 
here, reach him. Uh, how do I show chat? See if they have a eye for eye look chat understanding. Yes, yes, yes. OBS, uh, control, CSS, iframe. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. What I'm guessing is that OBS actually, um, OBS has the ability to set CSS. Guessing what happens here is this CSS and OBS is added in directly, um, which is not going to be useful for us trying to embed this onto our onto an HTML page. Um, I wish I knew how to get rid of these things. Turn hide messages off. Uh, one second here.
All right, sorry about that. Um, okay, so I really want this to look right, <laughs> or look better than it does now, and I want to get rid of this. Um, let's see where this is in here. Document. Status block. Ready and waiting for messages. in line. Get the chat. Um, let's see here. So, should give me the iframe. Frame dot. message. Actually, it's an ID. So this is probably going to give me a cross domain error at the very least, but let's let's give it a try. Get element by ID. 
of undefined element by ID. Uh, window is it window.document? frame with origin. Cool. Huh. It's actually not there. Let's see. I framed a document. So can you recover it of undefined? So this is not defined get uh, let's see here what are we doing get document See if this works. Iframe is not a function. just a race condition thing because the DOM isn't there yet. So get element by ID of null. Let's do three seconds.
So there we have an iframe uh, document equals. So if it has a content window, So that's actually working then. So I can't do this uh, because of the origins. So let's see if this is as easy as editing here. So uh, I do say slash back. Um, I don't think this is how it works. But no, uh, where's the restream? Yes. got some cousins over today so uh, they're having fun and bringing me chocolate so I can't complain too much Let's see here uh, all right so cores I suspect that this is something that I'm not going to be able to do cores enable cores
Mm-hmm. Get widgets. Let me see what this URL is. I want to see what the content looks like because if the actual source for it isn't too bad, then it's entirely possible I could do one of these other hacks. do this with the cash. So I think I can download this.
can't do inline iframe. interface and we'll do get I think I'm gonna to have to be done with this, uh, with this part because this is taking longer than I had thought it would. Um, or I could just not worry about um, that extra junk, which is probably the better option. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm going to remove this. Just delete it.
right, so let's go ahead and wrap this real quick. PY 16. Let's just leave this empty for now. Um, instead, I think I can do height 100%. Actually, I don't think I do percent. Is that working? Div class container border ex. Ah, so I wouldn't be able to do this. So. Facebook. Um, uh, height. Auto. Auto. the tailwind dive see what they have to say about this so let's do height all right h1 h screen i don't think screen is exactly what i want because that's going to Height viewable area. Um, It works better with uh, a darker color background, so I'm going to switch it to boxed. And D4. 
default. Maybe I'll use a default. Copy the URL. Guess I don't mind having that background there. So in theory, this is live. So it looks like I have a couple of viewers. So if anyone starts typing uh, into the chat room, um, in theory, we would see it show up on here. <laughs> um, okay, so I think this is probably going to be good, um, at least for now. Let me get the music going again here. There we go. All right, so we have the chat going. Um, create a chat controller, uh, added the Discord link, and we embedded restream chats and chat page. So I think, ah, looks like uh, Marcus, um, on Google has sent a test message. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. It looks like it's working then. <laughs> um, yeah, so the idea being eventually I want this page to sort of be the, the chat hub um, across the different platforms that are going to be supported. Um, Restream's support uh, for this chat isn't necessarily very good. Um, I have seen instances where it has just, like just not shown anything at all. Um, or I'll find out later that half the messages from um, YouTube didn't make it. Um, we can see very clearly right here that Facebook is struggling. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it <laughs> for now. Um, although, I wonder if I can, I can do a negative padding. That might be a way to get around this. Let's see. Now, uh, let's see if we can do. That would work. My frame is such a relative. I want to hide the first site. Hmm. Well, it doesn't hurt trying, but it really doesn't seem like that should work. I think that was going to work. Um, I'll just leave it for now. It's still not my favorite. Um, it's possible I can turn off chat. Maybe not. Maybe I can't. Um, can I do settings here?
All right, well, I'm gonna try to take that up offline then because I don't think I want to spend more time on it right now. Uh, but I do think I want to make the chat higher or taller. Um, it's the biggest one we have here, height 75. Those are API platforms, height inherent. doesn't work. Yeah, full doesn't do much there. Uh, yeah, so it's not going to make it bigger, so let's do Four, which I guess is prop maybe good for now. Try auto before. So we do here. And yeah, auto must be the default. All right, so H64 is 16 RAM. Let's do. fine for now. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, okay. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get that while we're sitting here. Okay. So, uh, we have the chat page done. Um, let's take a look at the Astrocast Countdown web component. Um, so what I'd done last time <laughs> Oliver just uh, said on chat that he was thinking that Luke was going to join us on all of the stream. Sadly, no. Um, uh, looks like the family, the rest of the family went and uh, 
are going to be visiting the zoo today. Um, so it might be one of the last times they're able to go to the zoo <laughs> um, this year anyway. Uh, our zoo's, uh, the zoo in Madison is actually open all the time, I think, but during the winter it's not super pleasant. Okay, so um, let's take a look here at the web component stuff that I worked on. Um, so we have the countdown class. Um, it created a uh, shadow root and then use the existing content as the shadow root. I think we're going to do something a little different because we're going to be creating um, an iframe and things like that. So um, I think that might be a little different. So I need to do some more research on that as we go. Um, there were a couple of things that um, we got, uh, we did on here. I added a until method, um, and this was actually what we used to get the uh, the moment object that represented uh, what time on the, the uh, clock. Uh, so if we look at the clock, we can see what that looked like again here. Um, when we look at the source code, we'll see that the AstroCast countdown web component um, had an until specified um, and a source time zone specified. So the countdown runs until the next episode is supposed to start. So this is actually, I think, Monday. Uh, this should be Monday at 4 p.m. in uh, US Central Time. Uh, we specify the display style as digital and then uh, what we want it to say when uh, the countdown is ended. Um, so when we first load the page, it's gonna have you display this content. Um, and then as soon as it's able to uh, parse uh, the until value, um, and calculate, um, you know, these these actual values. Um, then this inf this content will be replaced um, by that information. Um, if we get to the point where now is after this value, then um, the counter will be replaced with the words or with the word now. This is actually what we have on the live sessions page as well. Um, so you can see when I first load it, it says two days, and then shortly after, um, it gives us a little more resolution. So this is using the same exact component. Um, so it's still using until, and so it's getting the same value. So this is Monday at 4 p.m. Um, the display style isn't digital, it's textual. Uh, so it's a little different here in that aspect. And then the ended label is going to say any second now. Um, and then the default value that is put in there is the, the twig uh, time diff uh, filter that we found like two or three sessions ago. So it's the same code um, in both, both places. The only parts that are different are what happens when you show ended um, when you show textual diff and when you show um, a digital diff. Um, so here for the textual one, um, actually this, this code that shouldn't be there, um, it sets the context, uh, the content of the shadow root to um, in, and then it processes the diffs, days, hours, minutes, seconds. Um, it filters out any of them that are zero. So we're only gonna look at uh, any of these elements that um, have a positive value. Um, and then we map the key. Uh, so this is where we can um, see that the key is going to be days. And then we send in the value. Um, and if the value is one, um, then we singularize it. And actually, I think I had less than or equal to, uh, or less than, or greater than one. So this could probably say um, value is, uh, not equal to one. But since we're filtering out the values here, we should never actually run into that case where, where this value is zero. The only thing I don't like about this is if we look at how this is rendered, once this drops to zero seconds, um, it's going to uh, completely remove the label or the, the whole thing here. So. We got about seven seconds for this to work. So 
So I think it's a little jarring that that happens. I think that I would prefer it to say, um, I don't know, zero seconds maybe. Um, but I, I can't do anything about it right now because it would make this bit of code uh, more complicated than I want it to be. Um, and I, I'm not really sure what the expectation there is either. Uh, the other thing is once this goes to say uh, one minute, once that rolls over, it's going to say two days and 59 seconds um, because it's not going to be able to show any of the minutes. So I, it was the first pass at it. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, so then there's some life uh, lifecycle callbacks that happen um, in the HTML uh, element. So uh, we're extending HTML element to create countdown. Uh, the connected callback is what happens once the um, element's actually rendered and ready to go. Uh, maybe not rendered, it's when it's ready to go. Um, so the first thing I do is define a get an update method. Um, and this is using Axios to get the next calendar event, uh, which was the little API endpoint that, um, that's gonna give me an error, that really just gives you um, the start and time zone of the next uh, the next time that there's going to be a scheduled session. Um, so it gets that information and then it sets the attributes on the object itself. So it updates the until value and it updates the source time zone value. Um, so the idea is that as soon as this endpoint starts returning a different value, then we can update um, the pages accordingly. So for example, it's the next session starts in two days, uh, 47 minutes. Well, what happens in two days and 50 minutes? Um, it switches to um, starts any minute now or any second now. But once that episode is finished, really there's a, the next episode is going to be on Tuesday. So um, without a way to check to see where those um, what the next episode is on a periodic basis, um, this code would really only work as long as the page was, was uh, loaded um, and then reloaded manually. So what we're doing is uh, rechecking for the next calendar event um, on a schedule. So it's going to try to get and update those values that have changed. And then it calls it right out of the gate uh, to make sure that it gets the um, new data right away. Um, and then we set up another interval, um, and this interval is the, the main clock interval. Uh, we create now, we create until. Um, if now is greater than until, we show ended. Um, otherwise, we calculate the diffs. So we calculate how many days, hours, minutes, and seconds um, should be shown. And then we call either show textual or show digital based on the display type or display style. So um, what we're going to do now is um, try to break this out into its own file. So we have our assets.js. Um, let's see, I'll make sure web components. Hmm. All right, so. Web components. I'll do actually. I'm not going to go deeper than that. Um, let's copy all of this. Actually, let's run it like this for now. Um, and you need to start watching. I think it actually won't run right now. Yeah, so if we look. 
um, it's not going to find that web component because it's no longer being included automatically. So um, uh, require That should do it. Can't find module. There we go. All right, so it's in its own file now. So now we can do the same thing with um, the the new video player we want. So let's go create. Um, and then let's actually mm, let's just do it this way for now. Let's require it. And there's going to be two types of videos actually. Um, and I need to figure out if. So I think it'll just be the wrapper. So um, in theory, if I go to the, um, just for now, I'm gonna go to specific pages here. So let's go to live session five. Um, if we look at live video, uh, I need to find it differently here. Videos show. Okay, um, class mix auto container. Okay, so the problem here is that the underlying video um, object again is going to be having the same problem that we had with the other um, chat page that we launched is that it's going to be either a video or it's going to be in an iframe. Um, and at least with Vimeo, I know for sure it's going to be in an iframe. And for um, let's see, uh, for like Twitch live stream, I know that's in, a, in an iframe as well. And the way that I uh, worked on that wasn't terribly uh, exciting. So um, there's a bunch of code in here. There's resizing, resize all players, and hit player. So I think what I can do is I can probably copy this code, um, or at least uh, the bit of code that um, handles the resizing into the new component and then wrap both um, the, the Vimeo player and the Twitch player with this bit of code. So let's go and say show, and out of the box we'll go uh, AstroCast, video this is actually a component that if it works right I might actually try and publish this somehow um, so reloading this page nothing should change um, because of the way that browsers work it should just um, more or less ignore uh, should uh, more or less ignore uh, new tags, so working podcasts, MX Auto Container. So yeah, Asterisk has a video. So what we're going to do is copy some of the code that we wrote, just the bootstrap code. So I don't need Moment, I don't need Axios. Um, I think this stuff should go in AppJS. So these are all things that are specific. So let's do countdown. Actually, let's get the whole thing here. It's probably some best practices that I'm not aware of just yet. Um, Astrocast video, uh, for example, uh, I don't know if it makes sense to actually register this within this file. Um, I just don't know. Um, but this is what I'm gonna do for now. So connected callback. Connected uh, callback will happen when it gets connected. So let's use this 
to try and um, sort of see uh, what's going on. We'll be, we should be able to see um, that, that this code is at least being run. So, uh, until showing to show textual, there we go. Um, I'm gonna rename this to video. Now we should see if it's actually working. So it is actually triggering something here. So we can actually do something meaningful. Um, I'm not going to, mm, you know, maybe I will keep that there because this should in theory give me access to, um, this should give me access to the underlying iframe. So connected callback. What things do I have in there? So this should reference the object. Yeah. And so I'm going to want to add some uh, JavaScript stuff. So init players, the way, the way that this worked was that uh, with the Twitch integration. So it looks for uh, Twitch player. So it sees any iframes that contain that. It tries to get the width and height from the iframe itself. And then it gets the aspect ratio and um, uses the aspect ratio later uh, to do some things. It also unsets the width and height of the underlying um, uh, iframe. So I think we're going to do the same thing here. Um, let's do, I'm going to copy these just so we don't have to come back here just yet. So ideally, we need to get that iframe from somewhere. So when I have an element, Let's go see how we did that in countdown. Um, what's that callback? So uh, we need to get the shadow root. And then iframe should be shadow dot uh, get.
shadow text contents. So it says it's text. I think I'm doing something wrong up here. Um, shadow root. So parent no account. Uh, account words. So shadow uh, pen child. It is actually probably text. Let's do uh, this uh, child nodes at length. Three, yeah, okay. Um, Is it? Let's see. Hmm. 
something to find. This dot query selector. Uh, I think we need to look in the parent node. understand why I can't use this. First matching, okay. So Marcus in chat is saying that uh, query selector returns the first matching element, not a collection, um, which is awesome, but I'm not sure why I wasn't able to append it as a child. So it returns the first matching element, which is not a node. Um, uh, pen child. So that's, that's good to know that it's supposed to do that, but uh, is this a dot node? No. Maybe something else has changed. Let's do... like it's working. Awesome. I don't know what I did between here and there, but thanks for that, Marcus. That that kind of got me unstuck here. All right, so uh, penchild frame. So now we have an iframe, um, and we should be able to get uh, the same sort of thing. So query selector, New from shadow. We'll do the same thing. Dot query selector iframe. Uh, let's see here. All right, so we do have access to it. So cool. So at this point now, the things that we can do. 
are probably these things. These should be safe. All right, good. So it's doing something like I would have ex expected here um, because since the width has been removed, um, it's now shrinking down quite a bit. All right, so uh, we're gonna add a resize listener specifically for this instance of the callback. Um, and I'm gonna just change this back to there we go. And then resize iframe. Now I need to go find uh, the code for resize. But first we can do do this. Cool. So it's actually triggering things like we would have expected, which is awesome. All right. Um, to show uh, my 16. Let's give it a little bit of breathing room. Not that we really need it, but all right, so resize is happening here. So so we get the iframe in. Um, Oh, document query selector. Ah. Hmm. All right, so. We want to get iframe dot parent node. Uh, iframe dot parent node to get many class. So let's go look at the example again because I think they were doing something with. parent node. I think it might be this. Um, This is going to be passing in this should be passing in the element or the astrocast video element if I'm right. Yeah. Hmm. So what I need to do then is make sure sure since this element doesn't have any style we need to add it so class equals width full hmm. um, 
and we need to make it block. Otherwise, width doesn't matter. There we go. Okay, so full width is not what I expected that to be. Hmm, why is that happening? So, container. I think it needs to be max width. There we go. Cool. So what we have now is dynamic full width ratio thing. Uh, I'm going to go. So the thing that I was excited about trying this um, these web components is that this is just pure JavaScript. <laughs> it's there. Um, there are, if we look in app.js, there are uh, two polyfills that I've added. Um, one is the web components bundle. This gives you all of the polyfills in case you need them for all of the different aspects of web components. And then there's just custom elements, which Apparently, some of the browsers that actually support certain things still need to have aspects of them polyfilled. Um, the main thing being, um, as at least as I understood it, the classes themselves extend another class and use a constructor. Um, and the problem is that this is all ES15 stuff, I think, or 2015. I can't remember how all of that works. Uh, but essentially, um, this transpiles using Webpack and Babel and all of that into um, the old style of JavaScript so that it's compatible. Um, but the spec requires it to look like this. Uh, so what this little bit of code here does, I'm not sure how it does it, but it makes sure that any of the code that gets converted to the old school style um, those pieces are all um, set up so that they, behind the scenes, do the right thing. So it's, it really is a polyfill, but it's a polyfill because um, the transpiling fails for some reason. Um, still a little out of reach for my brain, but um, it works. And the components are pretty simple. Um, the, I mean, this could easily have been uh, written in Vue. Uh, this could have been written in React, um, but it's just JavaScript. Um, and I'm trying to do as much as I can with pure JavaScript. Um, in some of these cases, um, I think jQuery is actually available, but I'm not actually using it, um, at least not right now. Sometimes I feel like the you might not need you might not need jQuery stuff. Just really takes more time than it's worth. Um, but um, I think I'm going to be okay with it for now. All right, so we have this um, video element. We know that it's working for this Vimeo page. Uh, keeps everything the way we want it to be. Um, let's try to see if we can do the same thing for the home page, uh, because the home page then is using Twitch. Um, if this video component works as advertised, then um, I think we'll be in good shape. It should just work. Um, I'm double streaming here, so that might be kind of weird. So I'm going to click off of the page while I'm working on it. Uh, but working on it shouldn't be very much at all. If I go to show, really all I need to do is do this same thing and put it in home. So I think before I do that, I'm going to kill all the, well, I can't kill the old JavaScript, let's see. Which things can I kill? Um, resize all players, init players. Uh, add class, remove class. Uh, 
think this might have just gotten trickier. So video wrapper. Where is that? Okay, so Twitch player. All right, so. ready knit player resizer so that looks for any iframes it sets up a resize listener yeah so i think the problem here comment this out. The problem with this is that it doesn't always have the player ID. Uh, ooh, welcome to the chat room. Wow, that's I loaded up a lot more than I thought it was. Um, going to I don't know why it's showing the um, the whole thing right now oh what to m dot twitch dot TV okay it's a redirecting me there is that what happened no okay all right, so um, what we see here is that it's not actually doing um, the right thing. Um, and this is because we've disabled all the JavaScript that would have done the right thing. Um, player ready. Um, where was the video wrapper? Okay. So let's see what happens if we just replace it with this bit here. Let's see, the problem is that that iframe may not actually always exist, um, and it may not actually have the right sizes. So what I'm guessing is that it's not working right here right now. Um, So let's see what we have for web component lifecycle. So there's attribute changed, adopted callback, connected callback. Hmm. So, the player resizer. Let's do query selector all resize all players net players resizer. Yeah, so let's reuse that. All right, and here, oh, we're gonna do the same, not really the same 
thing. Um, uh, iframes. We're going to say astrocast videos. And then we're going to get astrocast videos. And really, there should only be one on the home page. Uh, so let's do and then. You can't search by those. I wouldn't think so, though. Let's call when the player is ready. This is the one we need. So we don't want to get there until the player is actually wanting to be played. I beat the rebuild. Also, this stuff's showing up, and I'm not sure why. I think that um, I should check that out. Let's look at differences on the home. Video wrapper. Display block. So it totals the iframe. Is that not working? Online, offline, resize all players. 
completely different function. Alright, so we've got AstroCast video null. Wait a minute. <laughs> Good job, Bo. Alright. I think this is going to go a long way to getting this to work right. So, AstroCast video is the name of the component. Not AstroCast. So, all right, so it actually gets video. Okay, so um, the thing going on here is that we aren't actually trying to resize anything. So we have our, our video now, and what we need to do is tell it to try to redraw itself. So we'll call this video. Um, and what we were doing in the video component before was getting the iframe at the time that um, uh, at the time that the component was constructed. Uh, what I think we need to do is instead put it elsewhere. So let's do um, uh, init, which is nice and generic, uh, but. I want us to do that there. So there we go. Let's see what was there before. So this probably doesn't necessarily. This probably isn't bad actually. So if there's an iframe there, great. Um, but we probably don't need it. Um, so this subattach shadow root. Let's just create the shadow root. And then call init. It's not query selector iframe. If not iframe return all right otherwise we'll get the shadow root and then we can do stuff with it so I think if we go back to Live sessions five. It still works as it did before, which is good. If we go to the home page, it doesn't work. Um, but it doesn't get here either. This init uh, 
All right, so it does get into a knit. Uh, apparently it's finding an iframe already. Find that suspicious. So if that's actually there, let's grab this video. Do we have width here? Yeah, we do. Is there another, uh, is there another iframe on here? It almost seems like there is. This is finding it, local name. Where's the URI or source? All right, it's coming from cache.
why does it think it has already connected? Course vector iframe. with shadow roots. Was query selector rooted? Thing is, I have no idea why this would do this. So it's player Vimeo. Like I wouldn't mind if I knew it actually had that that iframe immediately, but I don't think it does. And if it did, why wouldn't it be showing here? Ah, with, okay. Uh, I'm betting this is going to get updated. 
once the iframe actually shows up. It's one of the things I sometimes forget about the JavaScript stuff here. Um, the console can be pretty nice, which is awesome, but it actually shows real-time content, I believe. So, uh, let's see, is there an error? Um, so, for example, if this element actually gets updated by JavaScript, it's not really a uh, immutable log, the console isn't, because those objects, I think, actually can change. Let me try this one more time. if I care about Opera Mini. So let's see here. Is it relative? Observer. Well, this it looks like the iframe player isn't doing anything at all anymore. So I don't know if I broke that. It's possible this thing was not doing anything useful. Still has width and height of zero. Oh, well, that's not cool. Pretty sure I know what that is. I need to figure out why this is happening. For some reason, that cache on the Redis instance gets flushed. That wasn't it, uh, Heroku.
Um, oh, fun. Apparently I needed to have added this and I forgot. I actually forgot both of these. All right, so. Okay, so it's gonna take a bit to load. So where were we again? All right, so for something looking for live screencast, it's there. It's not actually rendering anything. Uh, let's go back to home. So we get as far as that. Um, See what happens here. Ah, now it showed up. Uh. Um. I wonder if it only shows up when it's not in focus. Not it. <laughs> what is going on? Oh. What? Something about bugs that only happen when you're observing them. Twitch player. Here we have an iframe with the zero height is zero. Tab back. It's back again, but this is still zero. So that wasn't what was going on. Okay, so it is putting the iframe inside uh, the shadow root. It has width and height of zero. It has an 
aspect ratio. If I tab away, tab back, now it has the right width, the right height. We add all of the children. Oops. Okay, so let's get back to this. Um, I really don't know much about the shadow root and why it would behave differently, but one thing that might be possibly conflicting here would be this Twitch player. Like, I don't know Um, I'm not sure what's supposed to happen to that. So I'm going to remove uh, remove this part. And I want to see if it actually replaces Twitch player ID. No. Okay, it puts that down there. So I'm just going to move everything in.
children. Can I just do children? Actually, I think I might want, I might need to clone those. not and see what happens. Let's go back to live sessions. All right, so this still appears to work. The home page. So it's still doing that weird thing. But it is all in the player root. Now we just need to figure out why it's not expanding right. Um, Twitch no underline. Not even sure it needs that. So connected. this point so what I think is going on is that at this point when it's initialized copies the iframe. And if I have to guess, I'm going to say the and it called undefined children I
It doesn't seem to have any children at this point. This dot children. Why does it get in here then? What? Oh, I wonder if appending removes it. Yeah. All right, net called Twitch. See, we got children has an iframe. Width is zero. So there we go. Clear all nodes. Move. Let's see if I can have init called multiple times. All right, now let's go. Okay.
So uh, the init call is going to first clean up the shadow root. It's then going to copy, or it's going to clone all the children into the shadow root. After it does that, it's going to set up a resize. Uh, res set up resize is going to be the thing that looks real time to see what the width height are of everything. Uh, iframe set attribute. Um, so the idea here being that when we call init externally, after we know something has potentially changed, um, it'll set up the resizing again. After it's connected initially, we're going to call uh, setup resize also. So it's going to make sure everything's ready to go for the first time it resizes. So hopefully this is just going to work. No, shadow is not defined. Right. I guess it's not exactly working the way it should be. Shadow root iframe has width and height. Shadow width and height are null with a ratio. All right, so there's that. Um, resize is looking for the element bounding client, so it's iframe. All right, let's switch this then. So we're gonna make resize a little smarter. Actually make it a method that's used here. Oh, why is that not working? There we go. All right, so um, I don't need to say function here. And I'm not getting these. I'm going to get shadow. And this. iframe is not defined. Right. 
need to get that as well. We don't even need it here. All right, so now if we go back to home. Master cast video init. Resize. This start get bending client rectangle. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be able to do this. I think it might almost be done for the day. Um, this was a little more difficult than I was hoping for. Offset height, offset width. I don't know why. I wonder if that's because it's hidden at that point. So, live video. Ah, it's hidden. So the problem was that you don't have an actual client bounding rectangle. Um, you don't actually have that once you are hidden. So this makes it so it works better. Um, Oh, 
I'm gonna watch an ad now, so let's see how often this is actually happening. Uh, so init player resizer. So really all I need to do there is probably resize. I don't think I need to initialize it again. Let's see if that's true. Yes, I do. Okay, so I guess I'll leave that there for now. Um, I don't know if I can figure out. I don't think it's actually doing the player twice. Well, let's let's maybe leave it at that for now. Let's go to live sessions, make sure that we didn't break this. And we did. So let's see here. Net resize. Height is not a number. Interesting. Hmm. It's no data aspect ratio. All right, so this is potentially a problem. Set up a resize. It's called connected callback. And an in the net. The problem is that since we are cloning the items into, or cloning the iframe in here, the width and height are going to be set. 
put the aspect ratio uh, 1 to B. So when you call resize, it needs data aspect ratio. But it's not there. I'll need to work through this logic a little bit more, but at least for now, it looks like it's working in both of these cases. So I think I'll call that a win. All right, and the homepage is working again, so that's good. Um, chat page, cool. All right, so the chat page is on there again. Uh, that's all working. Let's see if we can add this stuff. And as long as we can see it live. Let's go check out Heroku. So it's deployed. <clears throat> All right, so it's there. So we're using it with the Twitch player. Um, I did have to modify the, the surrounding JavaScript a bit. Uh, I guess that's kind of to be expected. Is it still scale? Yep, looks like it's doing that all right. Uh, diff undefined. Hmm. Live sessions. All right, so there aren't any in there. Um, it looks like there is a JavaScript warning I had somehow missed. Ah, uh, it's probably looking at the, uh, it's actually the other web component. Okay. All right, so I think this is probably gonna be good, at least for now. Um, I can probably start uh, putting up the live uh, session recordings um, after this. Um, because now there's actually a player. It sort of looks, uh, well, it looks reasonable. So we'll have to just play with it like that, I think. Um, yeah, so that's the second web component. Still pretty excited about them, although um, looks like I need to read up a bit on the Shadow DOM, find out what the deal is with that. Um, cool. Well, thanks for joining the session. If you have any questions, uh, find me on... Uh, Twitter, send me an email, visit the website, join the Discord channel. Um, yeah, we'd love to see you. Thanks.